home to 37 million people, Tokyo is the world's largest city. It's a city of contrast, bustling city streets juxtaposed to peaceful temples. I wanted to spend a month here to really get to know Tokyo on a deeper level. I slowly explored each part of the city to give you some insight on the best places to see on your tour of this massive metropolis. In part two of my Tokyo series, we start at Tokyo Station, one of the world's largest train stations. From there, we peer into the Imperial Palace before wandering the luxurious streets of Ginza. Then I stroll the bustling alleys of Tsukiji Fish Market, sampling some sushi, then finish by heading to the iconic Tokyo Tower. It's a day that really captures these contrasts of Tokyo, and here's how it went. Good morning, guys, and welcome back to Tokyo. This is part two of my Tokyo series here. Last time, we explored Akasuka, we explored Ueno, Akihabara, and today we're starting in Tokyo Station, which is kind of the center of Tokyo, is kind of the main transportation hub of Tokyo, and there's almost half a million people coming in and out of this station every day. There are over 28 train platforms in the station, making it one of the largest train stations in the world. You have the Shinkansen, the bullet train that's taking people all over Japan, and then a lot of like the regional trains and the metros all hub around Tokyo Station here. And so today we're going to start here in Tokyo Station and then not too far from Tokyo Station you have the old Imperial Palace that's right next to us here. And then you're in a bit of a business district here so you have all these like tall skyscrapers. And then Tokyo Station itself, it was first founded in about like 1914 so it's about 110 years old. And the outside here has this very like classic European style architecture. You have this red brick and then these like domed interiors. And then, so this is like the more classic side of Tokyo Station, and this is the Maranushi side. And then on the other side, you have the Yesu side that kind of opens up to the other side of the city, and it's a bit more of a modern look to it. It has this like canopy and these gardens and restaurants overlooking the business district of the city there. So you have two different distinct sides, and it is a massive station. So if you're ever coming here, for transportation make sure you give yourself plenty of time because there's like a shopping mall beneath and there's all of these gates and entrances to all the different types of trains that you're taking and yeah it's just like a massive place again there's like half a million people coming through this station every day so today we're gonna start here at Tokyo Station head to the Imperial Palace then just to the south of here we're gonna kind of move south and we're gonna head into Ginza which is this very like high-end luxury shopping district and then from Ginza we can go to Tsukiji which is the traditional fish market and then eventually head to Tokyo Tower and Roppongi Hills and explore this part of Tokyo so yeah looking forward to showing you guys another part of Tokyo and a couple more neighborhoods here so let's start here uh, show you a little bit of Tokyo Station and then we'll head to the Imperial Palace <music> So that was the main Tokyo station right here in downtown Marunouchi. And again, kind of the central hub of Tokyo, even though Tokyo is very spread out and there's all these like train hubs, that's the main hub that has half a million people coming through every day. So from the Tokyo station here, there's this long path coming out of the west that'll take you to the Imperial Gardens and Imperial Castle here. So let's walk down this path and see if we can get to the Imperial Palace today. just crossed the street and gone down that little plaza from the Tokyo Station and I'm here in the Imperial Castle grounds and the Imperial Castle 
grounds and gardens takes up almost like a square mile here, right in the center of Tokyo. You have the Tokyo skyline, all these modern buildings just surrounding this green grassy area. There's lots of gardens, there's these beautiful like bonsai trees, and then right in the center you have the Imperial Palace, and there's this moat and this rock wall that surrounds the whole palace. And if you're more prepared than me and you can book in advance, I think you can take a tour of the gardens and the Imperial Palace, and I believe it's free. And there's like two tour times every day. So you could look into that if you want to enter the grounds here. But today I'm just looking into the palace from the other side of the moat here. And you can see a couple of these older Edo style architecture. You have this beautiful tiled roofs. There's this nice little like arched bridge that you can look into the castle from. And so this has been the seat of government since 1868 when the Emperor of Japan moved from Kyoto, which was the capital for about a thousand years, and moved it up here to Tokyo. Before the Emperor moved up here, this was the seat of the Shogun Empire, so there was a castle here since like the 1400s. But the castle that we're seeing here has been renovated a couple times, but it still has this like older imperial style architecture. So let's just take a look over the moat here and look into the castle and check it out. about it for the Imperial Palace. Again, if you were a little bit more organized, I think you can book a tour and actually get to go in some of the gardens and maybe even see the palace from the inside. But again, just a massive park. You can walk around. There's just beautiful green areas. And then, yeah, just this moat. And you can see like the city reflection on the water here. So anyways, the castle is right near the kind of Ginza area, which is a, a high-end luxury shopping district, right kind of in the heart of Tokyo here. So I'm gonna walk around there. There's some beautiful architecture, some really cool storefronts, and it's where a lot of flagship stores are and really nice shopping malls. So let's just head over to Ginza and I'll show you guys a little bit the streets of Ginza. From the Imperial Palace there, I walked through this little park, Hibiya Park, which just had these like nice gardens. And then I've come under the main train tracks that come out of Tokyo Station. So you can see the Shinkansen going over it. And we're heading into the little back alleys of Ginza. But one thing I just wanted to know, and this is true like all throughout Tokyo and you saw it in the other video, but under the train tracks here, there's almost always these like really cool little like street side restaurants really cool like lanterns and lamps and lights and it's just a really cool place and I love getting dinner or lunch at these kind of places here. Anyways we're gonna head into the Ginza area and check out some of the shops. I'll just give you guys a bit of like a walking tour, show you some of the things and I know there's like one shopping center, the Ginza 6 that I want to show you guys. So let's just walk around Ginza and check it out.
as you can tell just walking around this Ginza area, there's a lot of these luxury high-end flagship stores and they all have just like very iconic facades and so it's a really fun place to walk around because there's just so many different architectural styles and just different storefronts and yeah very colorful lots of design and a good place if you want to do some really nice shopping but right in the heart here is the Ginza 6 which is like a big luxury shopping mall so you can go in there get some air conditioning and then you can actually go up to the roof of Ginza 6 there's like a rooftop garden so I'm gonna head in there show you what it's like on the inside and then try to find the rooftop terrace just entered the G6 complex here and it's again inside there's like this nice luxury shopping mall there's a lot of like high-end stores there's like a nice Starbucks there's Eataly there's a bookshop very cool shops to browse around and then it has just this open courtyard and you take these escalators up and it has these beautiful lights but then the best part this is like the coolest secret I've found so far is if you go to the elevators and you go in and you press R for rooftop it takes you up to the 14th floor here and you have this like rooftop garden terrace and it's so quiet it's so peaceful you have all of this vegetation around here and then you're you're glassed in here so it's kind of like nice and quiet like you don't even hear the city out there but you have these beautiful 360 degree views of all of Ginza and you can see far off in Tokyo, you can see the Tokyo Sky Tree, you can see the Tokyo Tower, and you're just looking out over all of these rooftops of Ginza. So, very cool, very like hidden secret spot. There's like a few people up here eating their lunch, having a little picnic, but this is one of the coolest things I've found in Tokyo so far. So, definitely check out Ginza 6, head up to the rooftop. But yeah, just check out some of these views we have here. That was the G6 and like such a cool little spot going up to the rooftop gardens there. That was like one of my favorite things here in Ginza. And again, just a really fun place to walk around, lots of cool shops. So, but I'm gonna head to Tsukiji now, which is the fish market, which is just on the edge of Ginza here. So we'll keep walking through Ginza a bit, but I'm gonna go to a convenience store, which are everywhere here. You have like Family Marts and Lawson's. I'm gonna get an iced coffee, it's like 80 cents. And then we'll just kind of stroll towards Tsukiji. As you're heading out of Ginza here, there's the Kabukiza Theater, which is this very like traditional looking building. It has all of these red lanterns, which just contrast so well against the sleek modern skyline of Ginza here. And so it's a place where they do like some dramatic theater. So you can get tickets to a show here and they wear like elaborate costumes and like white face makeup and should be an interesting show. So if you wanna check out some local theater, some traditional Japanese shows, this would be the place to do it on the outskirts of Ginza here. So anyways, we're gonna keep strolling past the theater here and keep heading to Tsukiji Fish Market. So let's keep walking. About to enter the Tsukiji fish market here, but right next to it, to the left as you're entering, is the Tsukiji Honganji Temple, which is this Shinsu Buddhist temple here. But it has this very like Indian style architecture, this very interesting like curved roof and like a couple stupas on the side here. 
And yeah, and it's just, it has this very nice, interesting looking architecture. So I want to go check out this temple real quick before hitting the fish market. So let's see what this temple's all about. interesting I did not know about this temple I just kind of like stumbled upon it here but it has some very historic roots it used to be over in Asakusa but during one of the great fires in like the 1600s it was completely burned down and then they moved it over to Tsukiji here which was a like new part of town reclaimed area and they wanted to build it in the Indian architecture style because it's the birthplace of Buddhism so yeah very beautiful interior nice beautiful altars some nice gold all around and so anyways just across the street here is the Tsukiji fish market so let's head over there check out some sushi and check out some of the shops in the market here so let's go just across the street here to Tsukiji Market and it's just this big city block here but there's all these like narrow little alleyways and there's lots of different market things. You can buy like some home goods, some plates, you can buy some dried fish, you can buy vegetables, but then it's like an awesome place to do some street food dining. So there's places that are cutting fish and making fresh sushi right in front of you. Then there's other little dining options. There's some food courts and yeah, it's a, a really fun market feel, fun to walk around. This was once the biggest fish market in the world up until about 2018 because they had a wholesale fish market as well where the ships would come in and you would just have these big open markets with raw fish but now the the main like fish market has been moved to a different part of the city here so now this is just a bit of like more of a food market and dry goods market so yeah let's walk around see if we can find some fun like snacks and kind of snack our way through the Tsukiji fish market I know it's not fish, but I'll get around to sushi later, but I was walking by this lady that was just grilling this Wagyu beef and it just looked so tender and so nice grilled. So I just had to, I was taking photos and then I was like, I have to buy that. So this was about six or seven dollars for this stick of Wagyu beef. So let's try it. Oh my God, it's so juicy, so tender. Very good. Let me um, eat this beef real quick and then we're gonna walk around and try to find some sushi as well. Wagyu beef was amazing, but it's a fish market, so let's see if we can go find some sushi. I saw some guy making some sushi by hand in here, so let's go check that out. Thank you. 
so I went back and found the sushi guy and he's just like carving the tuna there right in front of you and then just like carefully pressing the fish into the rice here so we just have these beautiful handcrafted sushi here so let's just I got about four pieces here for a thousand which is about seven bucks so let's enjoy the sushi Just heading out of the Tsukiji fish market now and man that was such good food the wagyu beef was just so tender and then the sushi so good but yeah really fun place just to walk around really cool like market feel it's not that big again it's only kind of one city block but it used to be the biggest market when it had the whole like wholesale fish market here as well yeah pretty cool place to walk around on the weekends it'll be so busy you'll have long lines today's a Wednesday so the lines weren't too long but things were starting to like shut down at around 2 so you might want to get there a little bit earlier if you want to get lunch there but really fun place to just kind of like snack around and try a bunch of different like street food style meals and then if you're really experimental with like raw fish there's a bunch of like really interesting raw fish you can try crabs oysters sea urchins so yeah fun place to just snack around so anyways we have about a mile and a half or two mile walk to tokyo tower so it's a bit of a walk here but we'll be going through this cool like downtown district cool architecture so yeah let's go for a walk I was heading towards Tokyo Tower and I took a little bit of a detour because I saw on the map this Takeshiba port city which is this area right along the water here so you can kind of look out and see a little bit of Tokyo Bay and I mean I've been here like three weeks and sometimes you forget that Tokyo is right on the water because they just don't really utilize much of their waterways and to be honest here even the Takeshiba port is this very like industrial kind of area but I am getting this nice view looking out over Tokyo Bay and you can see some of the skyscrapers on some of the islands across the way here and then you can see the rainbow bridge that connects over to some of the islands there so a cool little view not worth going way out of your way for but yeah let's check out some of these views get some pictures of the skyline and then we'll keep heading towards Tokyo Tower As I was just walking from Takeshiba to the Tokyo Tower and there was like this pedestrian walkway that kind of brings you up above the city here to the Hamamatsu train station and you're looking like right over the train tracks here and then you have this amazing elevated view of Tokyo Tower and some of the city below and it's like one of the best shots I've seen of Tokyo Tower so pretty cool view and then it's always fun just being above the trains here and watching the trains in Tokyo so Let's check out some of these views and then we'll head down this street straight to the Tokyo Tower. right near the base of the Tokyo Tower but before we hit the Tokyo Tower there's this temple complex called the Zojo Ji and it's these grounds with a bunch of old temples that date back to like the 1400s and it's a burial ground for some of the Shogun emperors there's about six buried here in this complex and then um, 
most notably the gate at the front is the oldest surviving wooden building here in Tokyo dating back to about the 1600s because most of the rest of the temples here had to be rebuilt because of earthquakes, fires, and destruction during World War II. So anyways, let's uh, check out the little temple complex here, some of the old architecture, and then after that we'll go just behind the temples here to check out the Tokyo Tower. It's really cool the contrast of these old style buildings and then just the Tokyo Tower and the Tokyo skyline that surrounds us and just that contrast of the old and the new and then it just being like so quiet and so zen inside the temple um, and then yeah going inside you just have this beautiful these beautiful like golden chandeliers you have this like nice little altar and just a really nice quiet place so anyways right behind the temple complex here is the Tokyo Tower so let's keep heading that way and we'll see the giant red Eiffel Tower of Tokyo. As I have just made it to the base of Tokyo Tower, which is one of the most famous and iconic landmarks here in Tokyo. And it was built in 1958 as the main telecommunications tower here in Tokyo. And it's about 1,092 feet tall. And it's painted red and white to fit air traffic regulations so that it can be seen by airplanes and other flying aircraft. And then it was inspired by the Eiffel Tower in France. So it has this like very Eiffel Tower look, but it's just bright red in the skyline. And it's a very, very cool looking building. But then in 2011, some of the surrounding buildings started to block the telecommunication and Tokyo just sprawled. So they had to build the Tokyo tree, which we saw in the previous video, which is the new main telecommunications tower. Although this still does telecommunications, but now it's mostly like a tourism area. So there's an observation deck in the middle and then there's a top tier one. It's about $10 to go to the middle observation deck and then $20 to go all the way to the top to get some views of Tokyo. And then down on the bottom floor there's a little bit of like a shopping center, a shopping mall, just some gift stores and everything like that. So very cool, very iconic tower. Cool to just be right here beneath it and looking up at this Eiffel Tower inspired building here in the middle of Tokyo. So. I don't think I'm going to go up because, again, I've already gotten views and I'd rather walk around some of these streets and get views looking back on this iconic tower. So yeah, let's just kind of like walk around this area and see what other views we get of the Tokyo Tower. fun kind of wandering around this neighborhood around the Tokyo Tower just getting different compositions and lining up the tower in between different buildings and different alleyways and yeah just getting lots of different views of the Tokyo Tower not to mention there's a lot of other kind of cool quirky modern architecture around here so anyways from the Tokyo Tower here we're gonna walk about maybe three-quarters of a mile up to Roppongi Hills and that'll be about the last stop of the day this afternoon and we'll just kind of check out that area
So I have just made it to Roppongi Hills Mori Tower, which is this tall complex here right in the middle of Roppongi. And Roppongi is, again, like a very modern part of Tokyo. So you have a lot of really nice restaurants and you're not far from the embassies. And it's also like a really n well-known nightlife spot. So there's a lot of like bars and clubs and places to hang out. And then the Mori Tower here, it's like a big cultural complex. So there's a lot of nice shopping, there's cinemas. There's actually another observation deck here that's about 20 bucks to get up to the top of and you get this really nice view. And from outside the tower here, you're a little bit elevated and we have this really nice view looking back over the Tokyo skyline and you can see the Tokyo tower from here. So pretty cool place. And then, yeah, there's this place is also known for a lot of art museums and a lot of like nice shopping districts and stuff like that. So, and so yeah, that's about it guys. It's a, it's almost dusk here. So the sun will be setting soon. So I'll probably just hang out here in the Rapongi Hills area, get some nice food, get, get a nice dinner and just enjoy these views looking out over Tokyo tower and some of the skyline here. But it was a long day of walking here, starting from the Tokyo Metro station, doing the Imperial palace. And then Ginza, the Tsukiji fish market, the Tokyo Tower, a couple temples along the way, and then all the way to Roppongi Hills. I think I've walked like about 13 miles today and I still need to get home, but I will take the train. Again, trains are really easy to take around here, so you, there's no reason you need to walk as much as I did, but I just love walking. I love seeing all the in-betweens and just, yeah, seeing what I find along the way. So anyways, tomorrow I'm moving to Shibuya and I still have to show you another part of Tokyo that we haven't even touched yet, Shibuya, uh, Harajuku, and Shinjuku, which are some of the most like vibrant places here in Tokyo. It's where you get like a lot of the neon lights and they're very busy, bustling parts of Tokyo. So I'm really excited to show you guys that. So in the next couple days, I'll be taking you to that part of Tokyo for part three of our series of exploring here in Tokyo. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the walking tour of Tokyo today and I'll see you guys next time.